Shada Bakashara Boko Sarabani Sakatis Sada Kabosh. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Ashidi Abanko Shabakatis. Ayedeke Shadabaka Shadabakando. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we just praise your name and we exalt you again tonight. We exalt you again in this place. Father, as we continue to go deeper in the things of the Spirit, Father, we ask you tonight to loose your revelation again tonight, loose insight again tonight, loose understanding again tonight, loose lord god the impact of your word loose the anointing the demonstration of your power in the name of yeshua that those who would hear the word of the lord would be strengthened would be encouraged would be empowered father god in this last days that we are living in Help us to endure the end times by supernatural means. And that supernatural means is who we are in Messiah Yeshua through the royal priesthood, through the high calling of God. Manifest yourself through your people. And we make ourselves available to you. We make ourselves available to the Holy Ghost that we will be able to accomplish and fulfill the prophetic mandate that is upon our lives. The prophetic predestination that's upon our spirits. In the name of your son, Yeshua, we are decreeing again tonight that the word of God will go forth unhindered, unstopped. And again, it will go forth, Lord God, penetrating the very heart the mind, the body, the soul, the spirit of the individuals that have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the house, what the spirit is saying to the church. Lord God, thank you for upgrading us again and restoring and reviving things in us that have been lying dormant for years. Thank you for awakening. Thank you for reviving. Thank you, Lord God, for breathing upon us as Yahshua breathed upon the disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Father, breathe upon us again. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Yahshua. For you are righteousness. You are our wisdom, you are our justice, you are our redemption, according to 1 Corinthians 1.30. Hallelujah. If you be for us, who can be against us? For you are the one that will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Father, we thank you for the status that we have and the position that we have in the spirit that we sit in heavenly places in Christ. We thank you for that, but we also want to operate and move in that, in that dimension. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, again for this session. And I pray, Lord God, again that the ears of our understanding may be open, and that our hearts may be enlightened. That our minds, Lord God, and our thoughts and our imagination may be a canvas for you to write upon. Hallelujah. May our imagination, may our mind, 
Again, our thoughts, Lord God, will be the very area where you begin to inscribe your visions, your dreams, your passions, your heart's desire. Hallelujah. Your prophetic words, your declarations, your decrees. Lord God, your logos, your law, your precepts, your statutes, your commandments. Write them upon our hearts as the word says in Jeremiah 31 and Ezekiel 11. Ezekiel, hallelujah, speaks heavenly about this. So tonight we ask that you will wash us with clean water. Circumcise us again. Circumcise the eyes, our ears, our mouth. Lord God, that we may be able to flow fluently and tap into the things of the Spirit. Lord God, we are so desiring to experience you in a deeper, in a holy way. Not just experience you, but in a holy way. Hallelujah. In a tangible way. Hallelujah. That we would be those, hallelujah, that would be people who would not just hear the word, but we would be doers of the word. Hallelujah. We will be people who will apply, who have application, who walk out the word, who live out the word. Lord God, that the word, hallelujah, will find expression through our very being. That when people see us, they truly see the light. When people see us, they truly experience the salt of the earth. When people see us, they truly see a candle, a city that sits upon the hill. They truly experience the brethren's and sisters of Messiah Yeshua, they truly experience the kingdom of God because we have the kingdom paradise living inside of us. And again, I pray that for those who have, again, ears to hear. I pray that for those who are under the sound of my voice, those of you that are listening by media. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you as we go into the word of God. Amen. Uh, Brother D, you can just turn that down to a it can be very faint, very faint. Hallelujah. God bless everybody that's here tonight. Hallelujah. And um, I'm excited again, as always, to share with you. Uh, we really, really, really been hitting um, this lesson. Um, brother, if you can just bring that down just a little bit more. Amen. That's, that's fine. Thank you. So we've really been hitting this, this end time um, scenario of, of, of things. Uh, we, and you all know, we've really been talking about the book of Revelation, you know, the earlier part of, of uh, January and really the latter part of last year, kind of coming into that. And so um, it's been a blessing to us because I know Again, that there are days coming upon us, and it's not just me uh, that is talking about this. Um, at least, with even within our own house, you know, we have men of God, ministers, we have prophetic voices here uh, that have been speaking on this, as well as me. So, if we've been taking these messages that have been given to us within the last few uh, months uh, or more. Um, I really believe that we are, we are positioning ourselves to be ready for the things that are coming upon the earth. Um, that there are spiritual things that we've been talking about to try to get prepared for that and to upgrade our spiritual uh, senses, our spiritual identity, to experience greater things in the Lord from our spiritual um, uh, calling that God has called us to be. So we want to begin to try to open these things up more and expand and then walk in him, okay? So again, you all know, I think I said this in 2022, going into 23, that we're gonna build a highway for the Lord. How many of y'all remember that? We're gonna build a highway for the Lord. Hallelujah, I feel that, amen. And so I think we've been really working on that, uh, on that highway uh, for the Lord to travel on. And so what that simply means is, if you look at it from uh, John's perspective, uh, 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 John the Baptist, he began to call people into repentance uh, because he knew the Messiah would come and he knew without repentance, you could not experience the kingdom. Okay. 
And so John, his main message was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And uh, he began to call people to repent. He began to call people into baptism. And so I believe that is our call as well, to call people to repent. That's why we've been out there on the streets and we've been um, preaching and proclaiming the gospel uh, as best we can, uh, whether that be through uh, repentance, whether that be through miracles, signs and wonders, uh, whether that be by humility of the gospel that Jesus has given us. Uh, we've been giving it in all dynamics. Uh, and so sometimes in the midst of that, we have uh, a multitude of people that will come over time. There's been a multitude of people that have came uh, who have accepted the Lord, who we prayed for. We've seen healing break out uh, in the marketplace. So as it relates to our kingship, we I've uh, been kind of activating that. We've been doing the kingship portion, you know, being out there in the marketplace. We, we, we own our jobs. We are not just, uh, you know, whatever the title that they've given us for our job, but we're actually trying to share the gospel. And so that's your kingship when you're out there doing what God has called you to do. But your priesthood, which is what we do with God on a personal note, of the, you know, ministering unto the Lord, that enhances and empowers your kingship. Right. And so when we out there, just to sh give you an example, and we're going to go into this scripture here shortly. And so just to give you an example, uh, a lot of times God can give us prophetic words that we speak to individuals um, out there on the uh, because we've been spending time with the Lord. Um, and then God graces us with his presence. And uh, we, you know, many of us that are out there doing those times, myself, Mike, Dennis, Eddie, my wife. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Sharita and many of you that come out there and share with us <clears throat> during that time, you know, sometimes we prophetically, but that's because you've been honing in on your personal time with the Lord and your spirit is open to hear what God is saying about the person. And so sometimes it comes out as a declaration. Sometimes it comes out as a decree. And so when you come out as a de declaration or a decree, then, of course, you're moving in authority. All right. That's that king side of you coming out hallelujah and so of course in our lesson though we've been focused heavily on the priesthood and we've been focused heavily on sanctification we've been focused heavily on consecration and so last two sessions that we had i felt like the lord wanted me to back up and just kind of recap some things that we have learned in the past because he doesn't want this to to fly over your head and uh we you know we're just hearing it but he really wants you all to get this because it's going to be important for you and i to walk in these particular identities okay so again you got an identity of a king you have an identity of a priest you have the identity of sonship right so these are different identities that the lord wants us to experience and walk in now it doesn't mean that we have not been walking in these things, but I believe that there's greater levels of them, if that makes sense, okay? So, of course, you cannot be a son without the Holy Spirit. So we know we're sons of God or daughters of God, and the Holy Spirit makes that. But there are, uh, different, um, there are different expressions of the sonship that we have that perhaps we have not walked into or maybe not at a level that we have walked into. Um, and some of those things we, we mentioned, that's the high call of God, uh, intercession. You know, some of us may not be intercessors, but that's a part of your sonship, you know, to be an intercessor on behalf of family, friends, the world, the nation. Right. That's a part of your sonship. That's what Jesus did as a son. He was an intercessor. Right. Uh, as a priest, really. But I'm saying all of that is in the same family. So if you're a king and you're a priest, you know, if you're a king, you got to be a son of somebody. OK, so all of that is in the same family. And so these are different um, different components. OK, you got different components just like uh, to this phone. Um, you know, of course, I use my phone for notes, but there are many other apps on here. OK, the phone is the major piece. It's the major piece that everything is in. So if I want to go to YouTube, I hit that app and that app opens up. 
And so there are things on this phone that I don't use, though. There are other apps on here that I just I simply just don't use because I feel like, well, maybe I don't have a use for it. And so that's all I'm saying with us. There may be dimensions in us in the king priest dimension that we just don't use. Not that we don't want to use it uh, in the sense of the phone. It's because I believe a lot of times we just don't know that that dimension is there. And we, we don't, if we don't know it, then we don't know how to open up. We don't know how to unlock it. We don't know how to. Do. And so I believe this is why God have, have us right now to just kind of talk about these things and begin to try to uh, unlock these things and open these things up so we can experience these things, not just for ourselves, but also for those who would encounter us. So we want to have something to offer. You know, the Bible talks about if a person comes to you and asks you of the hope that lies in you, you need to have a response. You need to have an answer for that person about the hope that lies in you. Okay. So <clears throat> with that being said, let's go. Um, let's go to this scripture here. And again, this is a recap. Okay, this is a recap. Uh, the last two sessions that we had, uh, and one of those sessions we tried to go back to this scripture, but we never did get back to it in general, get back to it, but we did speak about some things that I brought from that scripture. That was about two Wednesdays ago. And then this past Wednesday, we dealt with some things, again, uh, about um, um, experiencing uh, greater levels or upgrading ourselves in the things of God. <clears throat> All right. And so that's on Facebook. So you guys can go back and check that out. Uh, it's on my YouTube page as well. So anyone that's looking for those particular messages, they are there for you to um, for you to check out. OK. And so, again. Uh, uh, Let's go to this, all right? <clears throat> Matter of fact, can we read it together? I, now, I do know this. Y'all <laughs> <y> should. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm thinking about what I'm going to ask you all already. Two weeks, two weeks ago, last past Wednesday, two Wednesdays ago, I asked you all to uh, be able to expound on what you've been receiving, okay? I asked you all to expound, and so y'all basically had two weeks to kind of be able to to expound on, um, he might have to turn it up back there as well. Yeah, you might have to, let me see. Yeah, turn the volume up, not the music, of course, but the mic itself. Hallelujah. All right, so maybe that'll help, help those who are on Facebook. All right, and uh, YouTube when it's shared there. But okay. So, um, so y'all should be able to give me some feedback because you had two weeks to kind of really think about this, um, about everything that I've been sharing with you all to kind of give me a, a overview. All right. Who wants to, who wants to do that? Who wants to give an overview of what you've been pulling from these messages before we go to Ephesians or rather Philippians chapter three? Um, here you go. I'm just going to give you the mic. <laughs> the mic is already on, so it's hot. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah, to God be the glory. Um, and we're live, by the way. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> she said, thanks for the pressure. <laughs> you, you're not on the camera, though. The camera is on me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But um, I do want to say this while you're looking. Now, who knows? I might keep talking like I did last time. All right? And so y'all might get another week. But here's the thing. Remember what I said as well. When these things are locked into your spirit, you are, you are able to expound on it not necessarily having to go to your notes because these things are locked. You have received them into your soul and into your spirit. Um, and I'll use this for an example. You know, Dr. Miles is the one of the forerunners, I would say, of the Melchizedek order. 
Dr. Francis Miles, is probably one of the forerunners of teachings on the Melchizedek order. And so, of course, he came to our church and he shared this with us about a year and a half ago. Um, and here we are uh, teaching this um, to you guys now. Okay, so in other words, what am I saying? It really took me about, I would say, about uh, maybe five, six months to absorb that message from him and to be able to regurgitate it and spit it back out. Um, and I say spit it back out, but to be able to give it back out to those who are here, okay, and to those who are watching. So, and I can, I feel like I can give uh, insight. I feel like I give revelation on this teaching uh, because I heard him share on it multiple times. And then I've been doing my own research and my own study. And so a lot of things are coming out uh, from the study and research that I've done as well to, to the, the, here's, here's the beauty of what you should be able to do. With, when, when the teaching is going forth, where, whoever's teaching, you know, especially if it's a series, if it's a series, all right, because it's a series because they really want you to get it. You know, instead of just giving a message, one message, then you come back next Saturday, you give another message, you come back next, you know, so you really never get the, the message. So sometimes that's why God says, slow down, regurgitate this, all right, restate this, re-give this. So with that being said, <clears throat> You should be able to take the message higher because you get the revelation that they're giving you, but then you should be able to add to that revelation and go farther with it. You know, just like the scripture says about the foundation uh, is laid, right, as Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. He says the, the apostles and prophets uh, were built upon the Son of God. All right, and then we should be built upon that. And so when we read the word of God, what we've learned, we should be able to see farther. We should be able to see deeper. We should be able to see wider and understanding the word of God. Okay, so, you know, so if I hear, uh, uh, well, I'll just use me. If you guys hear me sharing this, you should be able to take this farther. So the ultimate goal is that you yourself should be able to share this with other groups of people. That's how you know that you've been discipled into the message. Jesus was teaching his apostles for three years, right? Three years, three and a half years. And ultimately, they start discipling others with the same message. There are things that Jesus hinted at that, the apostles and prophets, they began to elevate. They began to expound on that. You know, for instance, Jesus didn't necessarily give us all the details of what we would look like when we get to heaven. He spoke about we would be like the angels. He let us know that we're going to resurrect. All right? But that's pretty much the baseline. But Paul takes that same message and he begins to expound on it. He takes his father. You see what I'm saying? So Paul, when he begins to talk about the resurrection, he says, oh, no, your body is going to be changed. God is going to come back and get it out of the grave. And you're going to be changed into an image like an unto the son of God. John says the same thing. So they take the message higher and farther. So this is what I'm saying to us. This is why Jesus says that when I go, my spirit is going to come. And the things that you see me do, you shall do greater. So what I'm sharing with you all, you should be able to take this message and disciple others with the same thing. Now, the re again, I, I, the reason why I'm talking like this, this is what we are focused on as it relates to you. Uh, well, let me just say it this way. For me, back backtracking. Right. Instead of me constantly giving more information, the Lord said, backtrack, slow down. Let's make sure they got this piece, this portion. Right. 
So I want you to go back to the high calling of God, mention these points again, and move forward from there and bring them back to where you are. All right. So he wants you to get this. He really wants you to get this. And I want you to get it. And as I go back, I'm learning more, too. I'm learning more, too. So <clears throat> so he wants you to be discipled into this to where you can teach others. And until you get to that place, you're not fully mature in it yet. You may be growing in it and you may even understand it. But until you can start giving it to people, sharing it with people, let me tell you something else. Although um, I'm teaching this now and I'm sharing it with you, I'm not limiting myself to what I'm uh, doing right now. Um, actually, I'm going, me and my wife both are actually going back through the school. Uh, I got the book. Uh, of course, I've been under his tutelage personally in his presence. Then I bought the book. But now I'm going through his school. He just opened up a school for uh, those who want to understand this Melchizedek order. And so we're going through the school portion of it now. So in other words, what am I doing? I'm really trying to focus on this understanding. Even though I have understanding, but I'm not limited just to my understanding. I understand there are other people that know this greater than me. So I open myself up to uh, go through class and go through to get the necessary understanding. Uh, even paying the financial part to get it because sometimes wisdom, hallelujah, has a price on it. Remember, it's, it's greater than rubies. And sometimes you have to do what you have to do to express to God as a as a offering to him that I want this. If, you, if you're talking to me about this, I'm going to do my part in the physical to make sure that I'm putting myself in the parameter to get this information, to get this revelation, to understand this revelation. So I'm sowing into the spirit. Okay? So I sow a lot, a lot into the spirit. Uh, and that's probably why I don't have a lot to offer in the natural. Because <laughs> I give a lot in the spirit. So, but anyway, but it, but it shows itself. It reveals itself. Okay? That what is happening in my spiritual life is, is, is revealing Okay, so with that being said, now let's go, um, let's go to Philippians. Let's go to Philippians. Um, okay, let me, let me, let me just do this. Brother, let's, let's go back to that verse 12 and then we'll just read into it, Okay. It says, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's go to verse 11. No, 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 no. Verse 10. <laughs> let's go 10. I think I paused there. Even though there's some other stuff above it as well, that's good. But it says in verse 10, it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Now, again, we talked about no, right? We, we expounded on this word no. It's an experiential no. It's not just a head knowledge, although it starts there, okay? It starts with you putting information in to your thoughts and your, uh, uh, the uh, knowledge of things that we read about in the Word of God. And then we start to get a picture of that. We start to get an image of that, all right? So he says that I may know him or I may experience him in the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Now, how many of us, you know, experience this? So this is what I'm saying. We can be, you know, saved, but there are different dimensions that we haven't even experienced. You know, what you mean the power of his resurrection? I want to experience him in the power of his resurrection. All right. I want to experience him or fellowship with Messiah. He's talking about Paul is talking about. I want to know, I want to be a part, I want to tangibly be able to experience this resurrection power. In other words, what, if, what does it feel like to be um, sacrificed and, and then get up from that? 
I want to experience what it means to be an offering for God and resurrect. Hallelujah. And sometimes our offering and our sacrifice to the Lord could be because of the things that we deal with in, on a day-to-day basis. You know, uh, we're, we're making offerings, we're making sacrifices, meaning sometimes we experience troubles and trials and tests. And these things are becoming, you know, what we've said before about these are weights upon us that come, that actually elevate us in the realm of the spirit, especially if we're suffering for righteousness. That's the key. We're suffering for righteousness, then this adds weight to who we are in the spirit. Okay? And so by suffering for righteousness sake and weight and value and worth is put upon our life, then we're able, hallelujah, to express certain dimensions of God because we have went through certain things. Matter of fact, there's a scripture, um, I can't remember exactly where it is right now, but there's a scripture that talks about uh, the, that if you haven't truly suffered, you really can't ex- experience the, the, the glory. And remember we mentioned uh, a few weeks back about there is a glory that God wants us to experience. Either you're going to, right, experience this glory through you dying for the glory, right? One of those things was dying for the glory <clears throat> or you will die by the glory. But we got to die. And so Paul understands that. He understands that we're going to have to die. The Bible, Jesus, talks about taking up your cross, all right? So the fellowship of suffering is a part of our belief is to be able to suffer for righteousness and not lose who we are in the midst of it, not lose our head in the midst of it, not lose our hearts in the midst of it, not lose our soul and our spirit in the midst of suffering. This is this is important because if suffering is down the road, all right. If that's coming, then to be able to maintain my soul and my spirit in the midst of that and knowing that I'm identifying with Christ because I'm being I'm being targeted because I represent him. And we know, Paul, what he experienced. He, he actually got a chance to experience that real, real tangibly being made conformable into his death. OK, verse 11. Verse 11. All right. It says, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, we know that there are people who refuse to be delivered so they could experience another life. That's in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, the last few verses there that some people refuse to be delivered. They refused it. Because they want to experience God in a different way. That, these are people who, who know how to endure. Who know how to take pressure. Who know how to take pain. Who know how to take uh, being pressed down. Hallelujah. And yet come out on the other side of that thing with their right mind intact. Not losing it and not saying, well, God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why me? You know, they didn't, they, they was, not, oh God, Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, come on. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended by Christ, or of Christ Jesus. And so Paul is simply saying, that I've been apprehended by Christ. Christ has caught me. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, Christ has gripped me. Okay? And so I want to in turn, since he's caught me, I want to in turn catch him. He says, now, it's not, I'm not telling you that I have attained certain statuses. But as you see later, he's saying, but I'm reaching for it. I've already been attained by him. In other words, he's captured my heart. He's captured my soul. I have given him my life. I am a sacrifice for him. And we know he says that in his writings. I'm an offering. I'm being poured out. All right? So we know that Christ has literally caught hold of Paul. We know his story on Damascus Road. 
when the Lord knocked him off, right? And he saw this light. We know the story. Acts 26. Matter of fact, that is what I received my call on. In Acts 26, verse 16. That's where I was. I was reading the word of God. At 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm reading this. And I'm reading this. And I'm reading this. And all of a sudden, I get to the portion where it says, I have appeared unto thee to call thee a minister. And I couldn't read no further. The power of God cloaked me at that point. It's like something came on my on me and dismantle and at that time because I was under a understanding I didn't understand certain things because of where I was in in my uh, beginning stages of being a believer so Paul at that time was being called out by God he's seen Yeshua so he's being called apostle we know that but I didn't know that's what God was doing with me at the same time, I didn't know he was calling me a big apostle. So after I read that scripture, like I was telling you all earlier, I wasn't discipled in it until five years later. It was five years later when I really began to understand I was called to be an apostle. I was called. And then, you know, for those who might say, well, there's no more apostle. I'm not going to go into all that, that, that's that long spiel. But I actually saw Yahshua and the Father in a vision. All right, but that came later too. That came later on too. And some of you all may be aware of that if you was on that call that one day uh, some years back where I had the encounter with the, I was on a prayer call praying for, um, praying for whoever that was on that call and just declaring the word of the Lord. And I got caught up in a vision and I saw Jesus and God. Notice I said Jesus and God. All right. I know that's uh, another horse, in the uh, elephant in the room right there. What do you mean? They the same. What do you mean you saw Jesus and God? They the same. Well, I tell people all the time, and I ain't got time to go to it right now because it's not our focus. But when God put himself in human flesh, all right, when he put himself in human flesh, when you get to heaven, you're going to see God sitting on the throne. Yes, you are. But you're going to also see Jesus with those holes pierced in his hands. So you're going to see those two dimensions. There are many people who have already declared that when they went to heaven, they had out-of-body experience, near-death experience, all right, visions or whatever, saying that they seen God. Remember I told you all the story of the woman who saw God sitting on the throne because she was in the courtroom, but Jesus was standing here beside her and said, plead my blood, plead my blood to the father, to the judge. All right. Well, some people may say, well, there was God. Both of them, both of them was God. Well, however, I, I'm just saying there was two individuals. Whatever you want to say on that, okay? <laughs> and then that's what I saw. I saw Yahshua himself presenting his blood to the Father. That's what I saw. And I was so awestruck by it, my wife would tell me, you, <laughs> she would tell me when that happened, you should have just stayed with it. You, you tried to come out to try to explain to people what you were trying, what you were seeing. And you tried to explain it, and the, the vision was taken up. All right? The vision was taken up. But y'all don't know this, and I haven't even told y'all this, but I had a dream, and I was flying through the air. And as I was flying, I'm flying through these particles, these lights. And it was a woman. I don't know who the woman was, but I couldn't see her. I was flying with a woman, so I'm assuming that this may be an angelic being. I'm, I'm assuming that's what that was, but I know it had a woman type of figure, and we're flying, and we're heading toward the light. It looked like it was the sun, but the closer we got to it, I realized this is not the sun, and the woman shifted. She was taken away, and next thing I know, I'm flying with a being that I can't see a face. Hallelujah. I can't see the face. And the closer we get to this light, it now illuminated into multiple colors. Hallelujah. All I can say is that we was heading toward the throne. I, that was a dream that I had. It's more to the dream than what I'm just telling you. I'm saying I've seen things in the spirit. I've seen the rapture. I haven't even told y'all that, that dream. I told my wife about it just the other day. Just the other day, I saw people literally changing 
and being caught up. Changing. You changing. You. And it was coming, coming to me and my wife. I won't go into full details of that either. But it came to me. We was like waiting. Waiting for the Lord. And we was waiting. It looked like a comfortable place. Like, you know, like you was in a room or something. A waiting room type. <clears throat> and so when it came to our time, we went up. We changed and we went up. Hallelujah. But there were some people that were left behind. And that's what I told her about. I said, we got to do something. There were some people left behind that we know. And I don't think the Lord was sharing that with us, or at least with me, for no reason. So there's work to do. Amen. So moving on. All right. So Paul says, I'm being apprehended. So I'm going after this one that has apprehended me. He says, brother, I count not myself. Again, I'm reading this. No, let's go on to 14. We've already read it. Go on to 14. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so what I shared with you all last year, um, I gave you all about six or seven things in this high calling of God, okay? So I want to give those things to you again. I want to give them to you again, okay? Y'all ready? You should have them. If you go back to your notes on the high calling of God, you should have them. Um, they don't necessarily have to be in this order, uh, but there is some type of structure to it. But let's just say, number one, sonship. The high calling of God is sonship. All right? So you're called to be a son of God. And you were, you were, not only are you called to be that, you're called kings and priests. I want you all to know that these things were given to you before you got here. So even when it talks about Jeremiah, I call you to be a prophet, you know, even before, before, he says before Jeremiah chapter one, I knew you. All right. I knew you before you came into your mother's womb, before you was birth, before you was a seed I knew you and I called you in other words the calling of God does not wait till you get here the calling is on you when he's forming your spirit when he's forming your spirit so when Christ or God is forming your spirit sister Quinn he is putting every component that you're supposed to be in your spirit and then, which again, uh, even with Adam, when he breathed that breath, everything that Adam was supposed to be was inside of the breath. Okay? So, when, when he gives us the Holy Spirit, watch this, the Holy Spirit comes and joins with your spirit. Okay? The Holy Spirit joins with your spirit. Now, everything that your spirit was called to be, the Holy Spirit comes and awakens it. The Holy Spirit becomes the power, it's the generator to your call. If that makes sense? You know, um, my, my family, um, I won't go into a whole lot of, on this as well, but, you know, some people, we, we use generators for backup power, right, when the power is gone. But here's the thing, the generator itself is not, the air condition but it powers the air condition if you got a generator connected to your house okay the generator is the power but it's not the air condition the generator is the power when your lights goes out that's what happened with us our lights went out all the components were still there the lights just out so the generator comes in line and you're able to flick switches, all right, because you have power, Holy Spirit, has the power now to cut back on everything that you was called to be. That makes sense? So if you were called to be an apostle, the Holy Spirit is, is going to be the activator 
of that because the Holy Spirit itself is. Now, I know I use a generator, but, but the Holy Spirit is. I mean, he is a, an apostle because it was sent. So it's the, it's the apostolic spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit is a prophet, a prophetic spirit. Why? Because men spoke of old as the Spirit gave them. Okay? So the, the, we know that the Holy Spirit is the teacher. We, we, we know that one. Jesus says he's going to send you a comforter. He's going to send you a teacher. The Holy Spirit is going to teach you all things. So we know these things. All right? So, so whatever you were called to be, the Holy Spirit has the capacity to activate that source in you because he has it himself. Okay, so the high calling of God, the highest call that God has for you and I is the Melchizedek order. Now, back in the day, I probably wouldn't have said that because I didn't know it. So that just tells you we're learning things that we didn't know back then. And we talked about this, that the king priest in the book of Revelation, even after this life is over, he's still calling you that. But after this life is over, you don't read about him calling you an apostle, a prophet. But you hear him calling you king, priest. Okay? So when you read the book of Revelation, <clears throat> although we know that when we get to heaven and we'll see Apostle Paul and we still may recognize this is Apostle Paul, you know? So, but ultimately, God is looking at us as kings and priests. Okay? That's the, yes, get, get the, just so for, uh, for media purposes. Amen. When you talk about the Melchizedek order, mm -hmm. I have in my mind that with the Melchizedek order, okay. that is the character of Jesus Christ. Okay. And I'm just wanting to know, am I on the right path? I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked that. Yes, it is a characteristic of Jesus Christ. Um, how can I, how can I uh, try to give you this in a short version? It is, it is one of his characteristics, but more than a characteristic, it is his nature. It is who he is. Um, So we might um, give you an example, a lion. So we might say one of the characteristics of a lion is that it, it roars, right? It's a characteristic. But, but a roar is not a lion. Does that make sense? A lion is a lion because the way it looks, because we, the way it's been described and the way it was created. You see what I'm saying? But one of the characteristics of it is that it's very vicious. So that's why I say, yes, in some sense you're right as it relates to a characteristic, but it's more. So as him being Melchizedek, that's his person. All right? That's his identity. So for you, just look at yourself and, and myself. You know, uh, you might have different characteristics, but when we, when we try to identify you, we're going to describe you by certain things that we know about you as it relates to how you look, how you operate. So Christ, he, he is Melchizedek, and the scripture says that, and that is characteristics in the Melchizedek that he does, like intercession. That's a characteristic of the Melchizedek, um, being a one that offers to God the prayers of the saint. That is a characteristic. Of Melchizedek, but he is the person. Okay, does that make sense, guys? That that help you? Amen. So when we're thinking about Messiah, we want to think about him as a high priest. Okay, we want to think about him as the chief priest. Um, in that order of Melchizedek. But remember when I said I don't know if you all remember this, but remember when I said that God Himself was the first. He is the first king priest. We know he's a king. The, the, the scripture says he's king, king, Lord, Lord. He, now watch this. He didn't just become a king of kings when he created kings in the earth. He was already a king. Okay? The, 
here's the difference. He doesn't need subjects to be a king. He's a king because he is a king. His being is that. Okay? That's why the scriptures talks about in 24, Psalms 24. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and the king of glory. So he's king regardless if there is any other kings. And he's also a priest. And so we talked about that as well. We looked at um, how he offered uh, um, uh, to cover uh, Adam and Eve. He was the first one to cover them with skin. Okay? <clears throat> and then we also talked about him being an intercessor. But he, uh, and I think you can read this in um, Isaiah 50, um, 50, well, maybe 56, 54. Somewhere in there. But anyway, all right, let's, let's get these things. Um, so number one, sonship. All right, sonship. Now, we, we do know two, of, two others because we've been talking about it, you know, but we're just, we're summarized king and priest, and we just say Melchizedek. That's a part of the high calling of God. And so all these other pieces are just kind of really components of the, of the one. Okay, so Melchizedek, and I spell that for those of you that need it to be spelled, and it, it may be spelled different in certain passages of Scripture, especially from the New Testament to the Old Testament. All right, but it's spelled M-E-L-M-E-L-C-H-I-C-H-I-Z-E-D-E-K, Melchizedek, M E L. C-H-I-Z-E-D-E-K, Melchizedek. Okay, there's a de the, the, the Z part is um, righteous. And then Melchiz or Malik is the king portion. But the scripture says that not only was he a king of righteousness, but he was also the priest of the Most High God. That's in uh, Genesis 14. Okay. So you got Melchizedek, sonship, abiding. I'm just trying to give y'all like one word. Sonship, S-O-N-S-H-I-P. I'm spelling this for my mom in case y'all wondering. <laughs> trying to help mama out here. Amen. Sonship, S-O-N-S-H-I-P. Um, and then you have abiding. A B I D I N G, abiding, abiding, abiding in the presence. Okay. You have oneness, oneness, one, the word one, and then N E S S, oneness. So what what we got so far? Sonship. Melchizedek. Now inside of Melchizedek is what? King and priest, okay. Abiding, oneness, intercession, intercession. All of these are like very high when it comes to your place in the kingdom of God. Being one with God, abiding in Him, being in that sonship. And this, when you when you have these particular things connected not just separated but they're connected and you're operating in these things this is what we talked about the ram of whatsoever opens up so when you when you realize okay i'm a king priest from the king priest i realize that i'm a son of god all right i'm a prince in the kingdom of god i'm a son of god and from my sonship with the lord my desire is to be with him to be one, to be joined to him. And in that oneness and being joined to him, then basically I'm abiding with him. I'm walking with him. I'm, how can two walk together except the two be agreed? So in that agreement, I'm abiding with him. And so uh, from there, now I have a status with him where I'm interceding. Here's the other one. I'm interceding because I stand in his presence. That's another one. I stand in his presence. So people who have that type of status, standing in the presence of God, because I'm one with the Lord, all right, <clears throat> now I can declare a thing. 
this is where your kingship opens up. I'm declaring because I stand in his presence and I'm an intercessor. Okay? So I think that's all of them. I mean, you should have about seven or eight. What do you got? Seven, six. All right. So name them. Sonship, Melchizedek. Who? Ab okay, abiding. Oneness. Intercession. Standing in his presence and whatsoever. Yeah. So that's seven. All right. So these are what I call the high callings of God. Now, there are other there's another portion of this high calling of God that we actually talked about, which is talking about glory. All right. There's a glory aspect of this high calling. And. Um, and so that's what, what. OK, our time. I'm looking at our time there. Let me see if I can grab just a little bit of this real quickly, if y'all bear with me. So, do y'all understand, as, I'm, uh, as I'm, I'm searching this out, so do y'all understand how you become this person uh, with the Lord because of these particular things? How you, you know, if, 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 I'm a, if I'm a Melchizedek, I mean, if I'm in that order, I'm after the order of Melchizedek through Messiah Yahshua. Okay, so Messiah Yeshua is the king priest, and because we are his disciples, and because we have received his spirit, then that makes us sons of God, right? But out of the son of God, we, as we continue to grow, we become kings. Again, all of this is written, encoded into your DNA. The Holy Spirit is the DNA of God. And I call, I call that the divine uh, um, what is the uh, that's the word, I, what is the word that I gave it? Divine nature the divine nature ability. You got the divine nature of God and his ability, DNA. He put his divine spirit in you, which gave you his nature. Now you have his ability, which is the Holy Spirit, DNA, the seed of God. The, the word actually calls the spirit uh, in John that uses this Greek um, term, sperma, for the spirit. Those who are born of God. Right? So the Holy Spirit is the seed, is the DNA of God that God has planted in you and made you sons. And as you grow in your sonship, you will begin to experience the king and the priest. And as you begin to experience the king priest, which is Melchizedek, now you begin to step up and um, express you're, 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 you're abiding with him. You know, they that abide in the secret place of the Most High God, right, shall abide upon the shadows. Now, you know God doesn't have a shadow, right? There's no shadow of turning. So he does not have a shadow. Basically, he's saying, you are in me. You are in my present. Those who dwell in the secret place, you dwell in my present. And those who dwell in the presence of God, who live there, all right, we know how to get there. We, we went over that. Psalms, what, 15? Psalms 24? Isaiah 33. He showed us, remember when we was talking about on the, when we did the women session that day, uh, that Saturday. And we talked about how to get to that place, how to climb up the mountain. How to climb up the altars. Okay? And so as we climb into that space and we do this on a regular, as a minister of God, as a priest of God, okay, 
God begins to give us things. He begins to talk to us. He begins to give revelation. And you, in turn, begin to share those revelations. You, be, you, in turn, become a mouthpiece for God. This is why I say in the Melchizedek order, it really, everything is activated in that. The, sp the supernatural is activated in it. So if we can just hone in on the Melchizedek, you, you, you're going to be able to deal with demons and all that. Now, there may be some particulars. I was sharing this with the priestly bride class this past Thursday. As we, now, there may be some particular things when you're dealing with demons and casting out demons that you might need to know. Although you have the power, there might be some things that's going on with the person. But that's, again, but if you're living in the presence of God, he's going to reveal that to you also. So this is a thing that I also shared with them is that this helps us that when we stand before God, when it's all said and done down here. When we, are, when we have walked in these things, lived in these things, we have consecrated, sanctified. When, we're, when we are standing before the Lord, we will not hear, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know you're not. That will not be said to us. If you're abiding in the presence, right, you're one with him. Hallelujah. You got his spirit. You're his son. Right. You, you, you as a priest, you, you, you consecrated yourself. You, you set yourself aside. You got the set apart spirit, and which is something that I said to you all said to you all before. And we're going to end here in about five minutes that the Holy Spirit, when he comes to us, saints of God, he's coming to set things apart in your life. He's the set apart spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the he's the sanctified spirit. He's the consecrated spirit. So when he comes, his agenda, his purpose, his destiny in your life is to start separating things that are not God. So you can walk in the fullness of who you're supposed to be. And Paul, he says, as we were reading, he says, I'm trying to apprehend. And we know eventually he did. You know why? Because he says, I finished my course. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Now is late. Paul knew. He says, now I can be poured out as a drink offering. He, he had finished it. He had completed it. He had been perfected. So now God can call him up to another experience called the glory. So once we finish down here, once we go through, now, I'm not saying that we're going to complete everything. I'm not saying that we're going to get everything, dot every I and cross every T. But I just know that those men and women of God in the early stages of, of our um, system of belief, they were, it was about the business of the kingdom. And you know, of course, they didn't have all the things that we had, but they had their own temptations in their day. And I don't even want to really try to say that what they was dealing with was lighter than what we were dealing with, what we are dealing with. I don't want to say that. I think every generation, watch this, I think every generation have their own trials and their own tests, their own particular things that that generation brings. And whatever generation you in, God gives you the power that you need to overcome that age. It's in you. God knows what we have need of. He knows that. And this is why I say that the scripture is timeless. It's the same thing that we read about in the scripture of old. It's the same power that we have for us today. The power of God supersedes ages. OK, it it trumps the condition of the of the age, whatever age you and I find ourselves in. The power of God is available in that age for you to accomplish and fulfill your destiny. I don't care what they bring. The spirit of God. Look, we can now we can say that the time that Paul and all and Peter, James, John, all these men of God, apostles, that were on the earth that time frame, we can say, well, they don't have the, the, the type of struggles that we have. 
You know, they didn't have to have to worry about paying the light bill and all that. Okay. But what about the old covenant? They have to physically fight their way through. These folk are dealing with giants. We ain't dealing with giants. Not in the physical sense that we see them. We might be dealing with their spirits. <laughs> and that's the truth for real. We are dealing with their spirits. They're left over. But he's given us power to, to deal with that. What did he say? I'll give you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will by no means harm you. Matter of fact, he said, this is what I say to the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. So he gives us what we need, right? Now, he didn't say that in the Old Testament to them. But he said it to the new. In the old, because they were physically dealing with these things. There were demons too now. There were demons in the old covenant. Matter of fact, he tells us that when your fathers sacrificed, they sacrificed to demons. So they was very, very present. But it wasn't until Jesus came and put the spirit in us that we can deal with him on a spiritual level. Because without his spirit, you couldn't deal with them. They will run all over you. And the only way that the, the prophets and the children of Israel of old was able to deal with those giants is because God supernaturally enabled them. He would take the man's smallest David and take a rock and he empowered David. He empowered that rock that when you, when you land, I'm, I'm going to make some things break loose in this head of this giant. Amen. <clears throat> so, saints of God, I was trying to find um, a couple other things here that I want to give to you. Uh, that I thought would also be instrumental and important. And we don't, got to, we don't have to do it tonight. Um, I, I'll definitely come back with it tomorrow, uh, next Wednesday, or um, next time the Lord, you know, grace me to stand before you. Okay, but um, one minute here left. Um, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for this word tonight. As we just kind of recap some things and try to be slow or slow walk or slow paced uh, this teaching tonight that your servants your sons, your daughters, your friends hallelujah your ministers, your priests, your prophets your kings, your sons, your daughters your intercessors those who abide in your presence those who desire to be one with you we want, Lord God, to be those individuals and yet collectively to stand in your presence. Not just to say that we can say whatsoever we want to say, but it is a privilege, it's an honor for us to stand there and to represent you as ambassadors in the earth. So, Father, I pray tonight that the word of the Lord that was released to them as it relates to the high calling of God and these particular components of that will be activated. Father God, to such a degree that they will become disciples of this, that they will share it with others. That they are able to teach this fluently to other people. How important it is to be upgraded to the high calling, high calling, high calling, high calling, or the heavenly calling. Saints of God, if we just think of that phrase, the high calling of God in Christ, the high calling of God in Messiah, the high calling of Yahweh in the anointed one. What was Jesus called to? 
If you know what he was called to, you know what you are called to. We know he was called to be the sacrifice. That's why he says, I want you to present your body as a living sacrifice. We know he was called to be the light of the world, to be the son of the earth, be the son of God, be the salt of the earth. You know, again, I told you all about a book that I'm writing called The Image and Likeness of God. And um, I'm on the last chapter on that. <clears throat> but the book really deals with everything that God says about Messiah. He's also spoken about you and I. The image and likeness of God. Matter of fact, that, was, that, that is also one of, the, one of the high callings of God. God has called you to be the image and likeness of God. So make sure you add that. We didn't speak on it tonight, but that's one of them as well. And I think that will be the eight. Uh, the completion. So, Father, in Jesus' name, these are things that you called us to be from the beginning. So we're only trying to, by the living spirit, to agree with what you have called us to be, our identity. We're clothing ourselves with the identity of Christ. That's why the word says, put on Christ and make no provision for our flesh. He that has Put on Christ has ceased, has ceased from this world's way of doing things. So, Father, we put on our kingship. We put on our priesthood. We put on, we wear the spirit of intercession, which comes again from Christ. All of these things are wrapped up in Christ. Lord, we stand in your presence because of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are one with you because of Christ. That's the calling of God. That's the calling of God in Christ. We, we abide in your presence because of Christ. We can say whatsoever because of Christ. Hallelujah. We are the image and likeness of you because of the spirit of Christ that's in us. So, Father, again, may these your people that are listening through media and those that are under the sound of my voice, may they again experience, manifest, demonstrate all of these different elements of the Melchizedek order. And may they see the results that when they pray, when they intercede for people, that may they see the results of their prayers because they are again living epistles. You have inscribed upon them. You have taken a blank scroll and you begin to write upon that scroll your identity in your people father we say tonight we are your scroll unseal us father through your son Yeshua he's the only one that can open us and reveal what's written on our scroll he can reveal what's been downloaded in our spirit and that we begin to walk in these things. I pray that for those that are under the sound of my voice. And for those who are watching and listening. In the name of Yeshua. May it be our portion. Now bless these your people. Cause your face to shine upon them. And be gracious unto them. Lift up your countenance unto them. And give them your peace. And put your name on them. Your name Yahweh. Yahweh Elohim. Hallelujah. Now, let me just ask, does anybody need anything that we need to pray about, pray for, deliver, anything before we leave? Anybody? Huh? Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh no, I think he he feeling good now. <laughs> you feeling all right? You're like, man, y'all just did that to me. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. 
All right, let everybody just stretch your hands that way. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that everything that we said tonight and what you want to do in us and the power that you want to release through us, the DNA of God. Father, we know that the blood of the Lamb of God makes all things possible to them that believe. We're able to pray. We're able to stand in the gap. And we're able to release and may the healing virtue of the blood, the body of Yeshua, by the power of the Holy Spirit, be released to Taekwon in Jesus' mighty name. Strengthen him where, where the weakness is in the body. The pain right now, we decree and declare that it is no longer. The discomfort right now is no longer. In the name of Yeshua, the feeling of weakness may now be removed and by the power of God be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. Hallelujah. Be strengthened. Supernatural strengthening. In the name of your son, Yeshua. And Lord God, settle everything that's in the stomach, in the chest, the congestion, in the throat, in Yeshua's name, in the sinus, uh, nasal passage, the, the stuffiness, in Jesus' name. Father, your blood be upon him. Your blood be upon him. Your blood be upon him. By the blood of the Lamb of God, take away the sickness and disease as you have promised us you took it to the cross and you nailed it this is not ours and we refuse it we resist it Taekwondo I want you to do that I refuse and I resist and I receive hallelujah May the anointing that destroys yokes and remove burdens be released from the head to the toes. And every pain, every discomfort be released from you. Amen. Amen. Can I get someone to... Hallelujah. All right, y'all. Well, God bless this to the end. Amen. We can still pray. All right. Again, God bless.